Hello there, and welcome to my 100% playthrough of Turok Dinosaur Hunter HD on hard difficulty. This is level 5, The Catacombs. Well, well, and well. The Catacombs. You know, I like to think, back in 1997 when this game came out, that this level was uh, fairly infamous. Now, I believe there are six secrets in this map and I, I yet again I forgot to check before I started the actual recording so let me just take a brief have me a brief think moment here Let's see I know where the first one is the second one because I think f three of them are in like the area you spend the most time in one of them is at the very end of that area so that's four Okay, yeah. Yes, there are six. Okay, we're good. Thankfully, the think moment didn't have to last too long. And I'm full of explosive shells. Awesome. Alright, in we go. Level 5, the catacombs. Hope you all are ready for ancient ones. Because that is who you're going to be facing mainly in here. You have Ancient Ones, you have Beetles, Leapers, Occasional High Priests. Yeah, a little bit of the everything. Alright. So, yeah, we'll start uh, before you go through either of these doors. Actually, you know what? No, we'll go through the doors first. Go ahead and take out the Ancient One over here. There's going to be a High Priest standing up here so we're gonna go ahead and take him out first and since he is man I can't aim the tech bow for some reason since he's stationary we're gonna take care of him first because he will not respawn killing him opens this door which leads I believe to the first key oh I heard that who fired that oh oh they're up there okay yeah I'm not gonna worry about them so that tunnel up there, we'll come to th we'll come to that much much later. That pit down there, if you jump down there now, you'll die. But that pit leads to the boss of this level. And just as is with level, or just as with level three, the boss guards the final key of this map. So you'll only actually find two within the map itself. So that being said, let's get to it. Now we're going to go ahead and open this little uh, door hatch thing from the outside because you cannot open it from the other side and we're going to go in there later. This is the main reason why I wanted to come in here now. And I'm pretty sure this leads up to the key. You know what? Ow. You know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll change things around. We'll go for the key first. I think this might be the fastest way to do things in this first area. Now, there's going to be quite a few blowgun snipers in here. But if you just kind of pop in, find where they're at, and pop out, you'll be fine. Just don't let yourself get peppered by those blowguns too much. Oh, or fall into that black stuff. I think it's supposed to be tar, but I'm actually not sure. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about those ancient ones. They can't really do anything. I don't think you can jump from here to that bridge. Pretty sure there is an invisible wall that will block you. We'll have to go there the long way. Yeah, they couldn't let you take too many shortcuts. They made this level as maze-like as they probably possibly could back in 1997. And damn it, they wanted you to explore every single bit of it. Which, of course, we will be doing. But in all honesty, it's not even that bad. There is one level in Turok 2, and anyone who has played Turok 2 and beat it knows exactly the level that I'm talking about, that makes this level look like nothing. This level is basically the precursor to that Turok 2 level that I'm talking about. So there's only one way out of here, aside from the way that we came in, and that's this way. There's going to be a few more ancient ones to take out. We're getting a little bit low on bullets. Let's swap to the pulse rifle. I don't have that many cells either, but... Yeah, we'll make do. 
Oh, I probably should have gone down there first, because there's going to be... Yep. Ow. Oh, stupid elevator. Yeah, if you can, take the blowgunners out. Oh, well. Now I have no choice. Take the blowgunners out first, because they are ranged and they're stationary, so when you kill them, as I have said many times before, they will not respawn. The mobile ones will, though, so don't bother staying here to kill, you know, them. But we're going to go across this other part of this walkway here for uh, the tech armor. And the good thing is, since you activated that switch, if you fall down, you can just take that elevator back up without having to go the long way. And then I think there's actually two blowgunners. Yep. Correction, there were two blowgunners in here. Oh, ow. Okay, quickly run this corner here. There's a full health over there that we don't need. So we'll just skip that. Oh, oh. I thought I had dodged that. And we are almost out of cells now. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say almost? I meant we are. So we'll go back to bullets. Really? I didn't see him fire anything. Whatever. So here is the first key. It is guarded by a very tanky, mobile high priest. Now, as is the case with the other enemies, mobile enemies have more health than the stationary enemies. And the mobile high priests are also the only high priests that actually use that teleportation spell. And I believe also, once that red cloud appears, and they start teleporting, they are invulnerable to your weapons fire. I think. So basically, whenever you see that red cloud appear, just take your finger off the trigger. There we go. I probably just should use the grenade launcher from the start, but hey. Who cares? There's the key. And yeah, so... That key is right over a pitfall, and I'm always afraid that when I jump up there on the pedestal and grab the key, it's going to interrupt my momentum, and I'm going to fall right down there and die. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think that actually happens. Now, I believe... Okay, this is where we came from. So we have to go to... What's that? West? Yeah, west. So we're going to go west, and we're actually going to hit the first secret area just down this path. Let's see. I'll use the assault rifle. Oh! Oh, nice. Got them both. Yeah. Buzz saws. Just time it carefully. You'll be fine. If you walk in this little recession in the wall here. Here's an ultra health that I thankfully don't need. Blow gunner over there. Run out of there, and then when you get or once you get down here, go through this wall. Very pulse rifle, and I think pulse rifles actually give you a full ammo restore. They do. Very nice. And then, press that button, and we're right back out here. Yeah, that's definitely the move, going for the key first. Without a doubt. So now that we've gotten the key, we're going to head this way. And we'll go ahead and take a right first, because I think this just leads... Yeah, it leads to this room. So I think this is a... Oh, wait, no, this is a... No. Okay, no, we're going to save this for last. Yeah, we'll save this for last. We're going to go straight first. And then secret number two is just... Beyond this point. Now, there is actually a telltale sign for pretty much all the other secrets in this map. I think the secret that we hit first is the only one of the secrets where this is not the case. But do you see that skull on the floor facing the wall? That's your telltale sign that there's a secret area. And I believe all the other secrets in this map, aside from the first one that we hit with a pulse rifle, have these skulls. So whenever you see a skull on the floor, just try to run through the wall. I believe that's the only time they're ever there. And, and these staircases just lead into the bottom floor of these rooms here. Well, we've taken care of the blow gunners, so we don't need to waste any more time in there. So now we can actually go this way gonna step on this here switch open this vault door for a bunch of leapers 
There is a pit in the middle of this little pool here, and I think down here is just, yeah, some life forces that I don't need. Try not to get crowded by the leapers. Who, by the way, again, can climb walls. So do not think just because you're at the top of a wall that you're safe, because they can and will climb after you. But speaking of climbing, we're going to climb. And hopefully not, uh, not be assaulted by leapers on the way up, because that would suck. Get that minigun full restore. Go over here. Climb up here. And get a minigun that we don't need. But the main reason we're up here is because this is where one of the bonus portals will appear. Might take a few seconds, but we'll just we'll wait it out. There we go. Alright, bonus portal one. Simple enough concept. A walkway with those little fire breathing wall faces. Just jump over the flames when you can. It's harder to do that if you're actually below the flames and you're on an up like a upslope, but it's not too bad. And the fire honestly doesn't do too much damage if you just straight run past it, but if you stay in place, then yeah, it's going to hurt a lot more. And there's an ultra health at the end of this path, so we can save that for later if we need it. Always a nice option. So now go back down here and quickly crawl into this here hidey hole. The leapers are just too chonky to fit, so they cannot reach you. So we will just duck walk our way over to this room here, which has, I believe... Okay, no, nobody in here. There's a blow gunner just outside this door here. Got several ancient ones, including, I believe, another, yep, another blow gunner and another blow gunner. Then if you go all the way over here, this is where that little door was that we already opened. So if you didn't open it from there, it would be locked, and you'd have to go all the way back through that little crouch walking tunnel where the leapers are and circle all the way back and open it. So that's why I went ahead and opened it first. But uh, speaking of tunnels that we have to crouch walk in, we're going to do that yet again. And this one is much, much longer. It's not terribly long. Bit of a nice detour. And plus the music quiets down. Just have the drums and the hi-hat cymbal going. Now, what is the point of this uh, little detour, you might be asking? Oh, you'll see. It is not for a secret. So we've already gotten both of these secrets that are available in this part of the map. The other four are in the next part. In various different areas. Got a couple of bundles of explosive shotgun shells, which are always nice. But I'm full. Actually, you know what? Since we have bundles of shotgun shells, I should probably use the auto shotgun here. Instead of the uh, grenade launcher. And you also can't hurt yourself with explosive shotgun shells. You can with the grenade launcher. Yeah, we're just going to keep going down. Oh, what's that sound? Hmm. Why, look at that. It's another high priest. A mobile high priest. Yeah, just keep an eye out for him. Make sure he doesn't get the drop on you by teleporting behind you. Okay, they don't turn invulnerable. You can still hit him. Good. I was afraid they would hit you. And look at this. The fifth Chronoceptor piece. That is why we came here. So yeah, this first part of the map is pretty busy. You get two secrets. And the fifth Chronoceptor piece. Lovely, lovely, lovely. But, now that that lovely little detour is over with, we go back to where we came. In a hallway that is, of course, filled to the brim with Ancient Ones. And High Priests. Yeah, there's going to be another mobile High Priest just up ahead, so we'll have to take care of him, too. I mean, you don't have to. You can let him potentially blast you with fireballs in the back, but... You kind of don't want him to do that, because that would hurt. Uh, that being said, though, I think I will use... Oh, yeah, I'm going to use the minigun here, because in the uh, next area, after the hallway, there's going to be another one of those rooms 
um, that just has a bunch of blowgun snipers in it. But the uh, this room also has, I think, two boxes of minigun ammo. And like I've said multiple times before, one box gives you all 500 of your bullets back. So, they give you ammo for it, you might as well use it. Go ahead. Oh yeah, there's the high priest right there. Yeah, that guy can haul, can he? Look at him go. Look at him go. Come on. Alright, there we go. Now, since these guys are mobile, they will respawn. So don't linger around for too long. I think they also can't go down these stairs, which is weird, but hey. Alright. Go ahead and pick off these snipers first. Oh wow, I think I saw a blood spatter when he blew a dart from his blowgun. You mean to tell me that the corpses can absorb enemy shots too? Well, that is just lovely to know. I don't think I've ever actually seen it happen before. Oh, ouch. Oh, great, he just hit me twice. That's okay. I believe there will be more suits of tech armor in the uh, upcoming area, so it's no big deal. Oh, and look how many bullets we have left. 420. Damn, we're just a few days too late for that joke, but oh well. Oh well, I say. Alright, I don't want to pick that up. Oh, come on, really? Oh, you're in that corner, aren't you? Yeah, there's two more of them. Now, there is a grenade launcher over there, and I think I do... Oh, no, I'm full on grenades, okay. So I don't have to go all the way over there if I don't want to. So you know what? I won't. Yeah, I'll let my armor go away. It's fine. Whoa! Oh, okay, that actually really did hurt. Jeez. You don't have as much room to jump over the flames here because the ceiling is so low. Well, not that the ceiling is low, we're just really high up. Or high up enough, anyway. So come in here, climb up this wall. There's a save station there. We will not be using it. Grab as many of those health crosses as you can. And here we are in the area that you will be spending the majority of your time in. So the key here is to raise these platforms Man, that background rumbling is really loud. You might want to turn your volume down. The volume in this level can be kind of wonky at times. But um, the key here is to raise up these square platforms by hitting these three buttons. Well, right now all we can access is this one. We have to go into all these surrounding tunnels to get to the other buttons. This is where the maze-like aspect of this level really comes into play. So first, we're actually going to go over here. Oh, also, fun little fact. The minigun is not a very good weapon to use against leapers. For some reason, it takes a good bit of shots to kill one with it. So, yeah, just don't bother. But yeah, if you take a left here, you actually circle around the back over here. And now the right area is open. But we're going to take the left path first. Whip out that pulse rifle and that assault rifle. Press the switch here, open where all these leapers are hopping around. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of sound effects here. Got buzz saws, we got enemies hopping all over the place. I'll try not to spend too much time here, but <laughs> this will be sticking around for a while. Oh, this leaper got killed by the buzz saws, nice. And we have a Perlin next over here. Go ahead and take care of him. And again, he just throws himself forward when you kill him. No idea how they do that, but alright. Now, I believe the next secret is actually coming up relatively soon. I think it's right here. Yeah, a Perlin mech will bust out of this wall and s stand in place, apparently. Oh, oh, no, now he's attacking me. Okay. That's alright. Okay, no, this is not the secret. I thought there might be one. There's the secret. Yeah, I don't want to waste my explosive shells on you guys. Yep, 
Yep, coming here for a spiritual invincibility. And there is yet another Perlin uh, wall trap. Another Perlin mech. Take them out. And I think down here is the next secret. Yep. But watch out. There is another Perlin wall trap. We'll just grenade this guy. Oh, man, I just hurt myself. Now, in this case, the secret is not in the wall that the skull's facing. It's actually just over this gap. Right back here. You get an Ultra Health. That I probably should not actually grab, so guess what? I'm not going to. But yeah, that's the first two secrets of this area. There's going to be two more. So that's uh, four secrets out of six. And it's not really too easy to kind of describe where you have to go here. Th this maze is actually not overly complex. I mean, when you really look at it, it, I mean, it may not look like it when you look at the auto map, but... Excuse me, this maze is actually quite linear in design. But yeah, these, these leapers are just so annoying because they just keep coming and coming and coming. But let's take a bit of a breather into bonus portal number two. And a freaking break from all that damn background noise going on. Alright, nothing else up here. So remember that swimming bonus portal from level three? This is the longer version of that one. So just do the swim forward trick of rhythmically tapping the W key at just the right time. I wonder if there's any way to actually do this trick with analog control sticks. Like, if you were playing this on the Switch, is there a way to do this trick? Since analog sticks are analog control, and a keyboard key, or at least the keyboard that I'm using, does not have analog capability, it's all digital. Probably not, to be honest. You might just have to swim at your normal speed and just hope you don't run out of air. Which you shouldn't. They wouldn't they would make the maze that you know quite that long. But now that we've uh, teleported back in, all the enemies are alive again, because of course they are. Oop, and that's the wrong way. Just keep going this way. I think we're at the end of this yep, we're at the end of this part. Step on the switch, go through the door, step on this switch to open these doors. And look at this. Switch two of three. And then if you open this door, you gain access back to the starting area. But we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. This here is just a dead end. There's the final switch we have to press. If you go this way, I think it's another like loop, uh, looping area where it kind of loops around the back. Gives you a shortcut of sorts. Minigun and a checkpoint in case you want it. Oh, and this door can't even be open from this side. That's right, you have to open it from the other side. So this is just a dead end for right now. So that being said, now we're going to go back to the starting area. And this time go to the tunnel section on the right. Now there is only going to be one secret in this section here. Uh, actually, let's use the uh, minigun. Yeah, I was ready for you that time, stupid giant monkey. So anyway, there's only going to be one secret in this tunnel section here. The very last secret in this uh, in this area is actually in the ending cave area after you uh, activate all three of the switches down here to advance into that out-of-reach tunnel. Another ultra health, by the way. Yeah, this level gives you a crap ton of ultra health pickups. Set the teleporter and turn around immediately because this is actually going backwards. So we're going to turn around. We're going to keep going this way. And yeah, you see how many shots it takes with a minigun to down even one leaper? That's pretty crazy. So I'll use the assault rifle and the pulse rifle. Thank you very much. And then the secret in this section is just around right here. See that skull? Bam. Secret number five. And this one, I think, just leads to a bit of an ammo cache, which I don't think was in the N64 version. I think. 
But then again, the N64 version didn't have actual secret areas that were tagged as secrets, so... It was probably here this whole time, and I just didn't know. Excuse me, you are interrupting my ammo pickup time, kind sir or madam. But yeah, look at that. Tech arrow quiver, energy cell, boxed explosive shells, and minigun ammo. Now that is quite the cache. Or cache, cache, however it's pronounced. I'm pretty sure if I say cache, the auto YouTube um, captions are going to spell it like cash money, C-A-S-H. No YouTube, it's the other cache, C-A-C-H-E. But hey, you do you. Now the good news is we don't have to actually look for any more secrets uh, for the next few minutes. But there will be at least one or two more of those wall traps that the Perlin jump out of. One of which is actually going, I think it's this one right here. It's also going to have a High Priest. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to wait on some infighting to happen. I, whoa, hello. Man, you can haul, can't you? Thankfully, they take a good amount of damage from the uh, minigun. Grab another spiritual invincibility, and we're going to put this baby to instant use. This leads to the exit. This over here, I think, leads to a bonus portal. Yeah, why am I using this? Pulse rifle. Large energy cell, which is actually the small energy cell. And this over here is a dead end. So we actually, yeah, you actually have to go through this wall trap to advance in this part of the level. So we're actually going to run past it, uh, which I think is this way. And there is a very handy non-secret in this area. Hop on this button, and we're going to go for a dive. And hopefully the sounds don't overlap heavily and bust out people's eardrums. Granted, if it does, I can just pause the game and unpause, and that gets rid of the sounds. Matter of fact, let's try that now. No, they're still playing. Anyway, that is why we came down here. The shockwave weapon. Also known as the particle accelerator. Truth be told, it's not a weapon that I really use all that much, if ever. But it's pretty cool looking. I'll find a decent area to put it to good use and hopefully actually demonstrate it well and not completely mess up the shots. I don't remember how far reaching the blast radius is. I think it's actually fairly decent, but we shall find out. But anyway, step on this button to open these doors, and look at that. The final switch. And the final set of doors, and we are now ready, finally, to get the hell up out of here. Yeah, the worst part of the maze is over. But now we do have to go through a cave. Not immediately. We get a brief reprieve from the... Well, I would say catacombs, but this whole map is called the catacombs, so not necessarily a break from all of it. Yeah, so here's the cave. And I do want to pop on the auto map here. I think if you go straight here, it takes you to a... Yes, it takes you to a minigun ammo box and a dead end. So now we want to go back down and take the turn this time. And that's a dead end. There's going to be at least one more branching pathway. Was he about to infight the beetle? I think he was. That would have been funny. Oh, ah. Cheap shot. All right. And I'll go ahead and take out the leapers in this cave since... This cave is a bit cramped, and yeah, there's also ancient ones and beetles, and if I try to run past everything, I'm probably just going to get pinned and get my ass handed to me, which I'd rather not have happen. So we're going to go this way now, and this is going to take us up to another small little cache of ammo, which, if memory serves, is, yes, grenade launcher and a quote-unquote large energy cell. Speaking of which, I'm full on energy cells. So we'll swap back to the pulse rifle, give my assault rifle a bit of a break, because I'm getting low on bullets. Now down here I'll just I'll just run. Box of explosive shells. Yeah, there is a high priest down here. Non-mobile, thankfully. So we'll just launch some grenades his way. So there he goes. 
I at least want to kill... Yeah, that'll work. Uh, hold on, I took some damage. I need some health. Mr. Leaper. Special delivery for you. Some bright cyan-colored energy cells. We have a beetle. Oh, there's going to be another uh, high priest, isn't there? Yes, there is. And we'll just take him out with the old 3-2 punch here. Three tech arrows, two shotgun sh or two explosive shotgun shells for the other way around. Then in here, we're going to have some more beetles. And what's that I see? A skull facing a wall? You already know what that means. Secret six of six, a full health. And when you enter this teleporter here, guess where it takes you? Ah, fresh air. With dragonflies. Because everyone loves dragonflies in this game. But yes, has the outside world ever looked so nice? We are almost done. Yeah, we're going to run past Mr. Dimetrodon there. We'll run past these raptors as well. Actually, no, I think the raptors can climb the stairs out here, so let's, uh... Let's not have them stick around for too long. They can overstay their welcome rather quickly. And then if you go through these tunnels over here, it overlooks the main area. Just please, for the love of God, do not fall down, because you will have to backtrack all the way. But we are going to grab some minigun ammo if I need it, which I don't. Haha. <laughs> I knew it this whole time. I didn't need it after all. But what I do need, though, is this here suit of tech armor. And way down there is yet another ultra health, but man oh man, that's risky. I also don't really need it that badly, so I'm not going to go for it. Imagine playing through this whole map and then dying to some BS like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump in the water, immediately go up to this wall. Don't try to jump out of the water onto the wall, it'll just forcefully dunk you back underwater. All the meantime, those stupid leapers are assaulting you. We're going to grab this key, and we're going to jump on this button over here, which opens the gate and drains the water. So now these leapers, yeah, they're not exactly untouchable now. Just like that. Full health crossing here. Yeah, this level is very generous with the health. Goodness me. And then we go through this tunnel here. And guess which tunnel this is? Just take a guess. Wow, I think a leaper just killed a beetle. Nice. Insecticide. Yep, the tunnel just above the death pit. Only now, the death pit's full of water. Does this mean it's now safe? Why, yes. That's exactly what it means. So we're going to dive, dive, dive. Yeah, look how far down this goes. And just in case the long fall wasn't enough, there's spikes. So you get your knees crushed by the fall and then impaled by spikes. Everyone's favorite way to die. <laughs> Surface in here, and here is the level end portal with cells, grenades, and minigun bullets. And that means it's time for the boss. What the hell? Why are those the level 2 keys? I've never noticed that before. The, that's the level 2 key design, that little chain link looking thing. Huh, well that's that's weird. Hmm. Anyway, so let's see, we have two of the three keys. The final one again is guarded by the boss. And we got the Chrono Scepter piece, we got all six of the secrets. You know what guys, I think we are ready to rock it and roll it. So you know what, let's do just that. Ooh, menacing. Our second boss is the Mantis. Look at this big boy. So the Mantis likes to try and uh, run up in your face and spit acid at you. And slash you with those giant scythes of his. Yeah, once you get him down to three quarters health, he flashes at a different color and knocks down all the walls. Fortunately, you can attack him while he's flying towards the walls, because he prioritizes knocking down the walls over killing you. And then while he's doing this, you can knock him down to his next stage, which is jumping on the ceiling. Yep, purple. And then launching a bunch of scatter bombs at you. Let's see if I can get him to do that. Come on. Jump on the ceiling. There we go. Yeah, that right there. And then, if you get him down to his last level... 
Uh, let's use explosive shells. Now he's going to go Berserko mode. He's just going to run super fast. His animation speed has doubled. All of his attacks are faster. And let me tell you something. The image of this guy running towards you on hardcore difficulty at this stage is absolutely terrifying. It does look kind of silly because the animation speed is already doubled because of the boss fight mechanics. But then you double that because it's hardcore difficulty and it just looks hilariously terrifying. But yeah, that's it. Not that much of a boss fight. Doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to you. I think the scatter bombs that he launches whenever he jumps up on the ceiling, I think that's probably his strongest attack. But it's also probably the easiest one to actually dodge. And of course, just like with the Long Hunter fight, once you kill Mantis Face, you are allowed to restock. So why don't we take a bit of a breather after that sojourn, shall we call it, through that maze, that underground system of tunnels, and just restock at our leisure. Explosive shells, yes, I do need those. Oh, another thing I think I forgot to mention initially, actually two things, now that uh, we have a moment to think. Um, there is no way without mods, there actually is a mod that uh, allows you to do this, but without mods there is no way to cycle through your ammo types. So for example, I have explosive shells now on my shotgun and, you know, explosive or, uh, tech arrows on a tech bow. You cannot cycle between the explosive ammo and the non-explosive ammo. That mechanic was not introduced until Turok 2. But, again, since normal shotgun shells and especially normal arrows are kind of useless, I wouldn't exactly call that a loss of a feature. Okay, I think we're done getting resupplied. And then another thing I, I forgot to say this whole time. Notice how the FPS counter in the top left corner says 60, even though I have 144 hertz display. The reason for that is because uh, the way this game's engine works, I believe that's the reason, the speed of the game, like the animations and everything, is dependent, or uh, is tied rather, to the frame rate. So if the game were to run at 144 frames instead of 60, it'd basically be like playing on hardcore mode without playing on hardcore mode. Everything would just be going like light speed fast. Including you as well, which I guess would look pretty cool, but... No need. Don't keep the minigun out. Let's stop the dilly dallying. Get the hell up out of the catacombs, why don't we? And look at that. We just got the hell up out of the catacombs. That's another level down. And we're gonna hit this here save station. Post haste. And bam. So that means the next level is this one here. And this is one of the most unique levels in the entire game, I have to say. The Treetop Village. Oh, yeah. Well, so remember how I said the first two levels were basically training wheels, and that level three is where the game started to ramp things up a bit? Well, levels three through five, I would say, is the medium difficulty. Levels six through eight is where the game really gets hard. Hope you're ready for that challenge. I know I am, or I will be at some point. But, as I've been saying before, I'll see you guys on the other side. And in we go.